So I'm not a gear guy, and this typically isn't a gear-focused channel. In the past, I've bought a new camera body once every four or five years, but this year I've bought two cameras. Today I'm going to talk about what prompted this switch and how it has impacted the way I work. You could watch anyone do a camera review, but I'm going to give you some observations based on real-world experience, having shot over 18,000 photos with just these cameras. I'll cover some of the main benefits I've noticed, which are video, stabilization, native live view, screen quality, and speed. Now, notice I didn't say image quality. I have found the image quality to be about the same as a good DSLR, but the convenience and usability features added up to still make this a worthwhile transition. My experience is with Nikon, but I think the broader principles are universal. So first of all, what is a mirrorless camera? As indicated by the name, it is defined by what it is lacking, which is mirrors. On a traditional DSLR, the camera uses multiple mirrors to reflect and redirect the image through the lens to the viewfinder, so the photographer has a real-time view of the scene through the lens. When you press the shutter, the mirror flips up out of the way, the shutter exposes the sensor, and then the mirror returns to its position. In a mirrorless camera, it does away with the mirrors. Instead of a periscopic viewfinder, it has an electronic viewfinder that displays a digital live feed from the sensor. The shutter works the same, but without that moving mirror inside, the camera body can be smaller with fewer moving parts. This was never that appealing to me. I love the old tactile feel of a DSLR. I've never been on the bleeding edge of camera technology, and in fact I was actually delaying switching because the cynical side of me saw it as just a way for the camera companies to save money on manufacturing. But at the beginning of this year, after four years after it was released, I borrowed a mirrorless Nikon Z6, and at first it felt like a toy. It's small, and I immediately noticed a slight lag when you bring the viewfinder to your face for that digital picture to appear. Compared to a DSLR where you're looking at a real view through the viewfinder, any lag is noticeable. But after just a few days, I found it to be a revelation, and I bought a Z6 II for myself before I had even returned the camera I borrowed. Eventually I got a Z7 as well because I like to use two cameras when I'm on a shoot, so now I am totally mirrorless. These cameras surprised me in ways I didn't expect and changed the way I shoot. So let's get into it. For my very first videos for this channel, I shot on Nikon DSLRs, which was not great. These lenses were never designed to shoot video, so the motors are loud and they don't focus smoothly. So I got a Lumix GH5, which I used for a year and a half. This is a great camera for video, it's very popular, but I hated it for photography, and I never got super familiar with the controls. Since I like having two cameras for a photo shoot, I was bringing three cameras if I was planning to do photo and video. Three cameras! That's not only a pain to travel with, but it means more batteries, more memory cards, and more stuff to keep track of. Not to mention, there's only one of me running around. With the Nikon Z6, I was amazed how fluidly I could switch between shooting photo and videos. And for me, the controls were so much more natural than the GH5 because it's stuff I already know. I first borrowed the Z6 before I went on a road trip with Daniel Sloan in the N3 Baru, and I noticed at every photo stop on the trip, I was using the Z6 for everything and leaving my beloved old D850 in the camera bag. So over just a few days, I came to rely on this camera for so much, and it immediately became an indispensable part of my camera kit. A mirrorless Nikon was able to replace the Lumix GH5 and the old D800 I was using as my second camera body. Now whether or not you shoot video, having the capability to get quality video is really helpful, and you never know when that might prove useful. A lot of mirrorless cameras have in-body image stabilization, which is where the camera sensor itself moves slightly to counter any camera shake. This means you can shoot at a slightly lower shutter speed and you're less likely to get blurry images. This is helpful in low light or if you're just moving quickly and maybe not standing totally still when you're shooting. It's not going to work miracles, but you'll notice a difference and it's nice to have a little bit of a safety net to help keep your images sharp. And for video, in-body image stabilization means you can move the camera a little bit, say without a gimbal, and it's not too jittery. This is probably the thing that has changed how I shoot the most. DSLR cameras have had live view for the last decade. It's a mode where it flips the mirror up and shows you a video picture on the rear screen from the sensor. 
But on my DSLRs, it's always been clunky. You have to engage this mode with a button, and then when you want to shoot, it takes a while to focus, and it seems like it has to make some decisions before it will take the photo. Live view with a flip out screen is so useful for shooting extreme perspectives, like when you have the camera low on the ground or the camera is directly above your subject. I just accepted that it was a little clunky with the D850 because I never knew anything better. On the Z6, the image on the rear screen is instant, fluid, and it captures images without hesitation. I find myself using the rear screen as the main viewfinder in a lot of cases because it feels so natural. Whether you're looking through the screen in the electronic viewfinder or at the screen on the back of the camera, the camera behaves exactly the same. So it feels like I've gained some new functionality and flexibility there, which I didn't even know I wanted. And that brings me to number four, which is the screen quality itself. Just like on our smartphones, one benefit of the march of progress is that screens keep getting bigger, brighter, higher fidelity with faster refresh rates. And when you're using that screen every day in different lighting conditions, you really notice the improvement. The Z cameras are smaller than the old DSLRs, but the screen is bigger and sharper. It's more pleasing to use and gives you a more accurate representation of what your photo is going to look like. And just as our screens get bigger, the newer cameras seem to just function a little faster as devices, and it allows me to work a little more seamlessly. When I first picked up the Z6, I was worried that the perceived lag when I put the viewfinder to my face would slow me down. But in practice, and for a period I was using the Z6 for wide shots and the D850 for telephoto, the DSLR was slowing me down. It seemed to focus a little slower or make more adjustments before it locked on. It was more likely to focus on the wrong thing and the live view lag was killing me. The specifics of phase detection versus contrast-based autofocus are too nuanced and complicated for the scope of this video, but in practice, the Z6 seemed always ready to take the shot, and this DSLR needed a little bit more time, and that time adds up on a long shoot. Uh, let's wrap this up. A mirrorless camera isn't going to make you a better photographer, and your pictures aren't going to be dramatically improved. But there are some convenience things that make it nicer, making your quality of life a little better, and you might gain a few capabilities, such as better quality video or shooting from more extreme perspectives that will make you more marketable as a photographer. On this channel, I always try to tell you not to obsess over gear. You should obsess over your technique instead, but I should amend that slightly to say that I had to redo that one because I bumped the table again. Your gear is only good if you know how to use it. Not just how you use it as a photographer, but how well you know the menus, the dials, the buttons. If the settings and controls on your camera are second nature, you won't waste time fiddling with it when you're on a shoot. In order to make the camera do what you want, to create the picture in your head, you have to know it really well. So I guess one lesson is that you should obsess over your gear, <laughs> or at least be familiar with the gear you have. Okay, don't obsess over buying new gear, even though this video is an implicit endorsement of that. Maybe I just made this whole video to validate my own consumerism. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, etc.